Pagination doesn't have to mean little page numbers at the bottom and next and previous buttons. With HighGraph's Pagination API and Astro's Islands architecture, we can do a lot more than that. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a simple microblog format. It's going to have a whole bunch of posts on the page. We're going to load all the posts to begin with. But then we're going to convert that. Instead of getting all the posts, we're going to get pages of posts from HighGraph. And then we're going to use a little bit of React to add a load more button at the bottom to allow a user to click to get more posts. This is going to keep our performance really, really strong, but also add a little bit of extra to our developer experience at the same time. Let's dive in. All right, so to start, we have a relatively simple Astro index file. All this is doing is pulling in our posts from high graph. We don't need a lot of information. We just need to grab the ID, the date, the slug, and the content, which is a rich text field, so we can grab the HTML off of that. We're also only, for the moment, grabbing the first 10 posts, which is stored in this page size variable. And then we're going to order it by the descending order of the created at date. This is giving us that kind of reverse timeline feel that we expect out of a microblog. From there, we have the data coming back from our response. We have the posts that are in the data variable there, and then we just kind of map over those and create a post for each of those. And that's going to be in our main homepage for the blog. So let's go ahead and run npm start and see what this looks like. All right, so we have a microblog. There are only seven posts right now, and these numbers are actually in each of those posts. And as you can see, we have a microblog. It's looking pretty good. Now, we only have seven, but what if we had 700? Then the page load for this would take forever. And it would also be a problem with our main query. We would just get way too big of a JSON object back. And it would take a long time to build, a long time to load. And that's a problem for both developer experience and user experience. So the first thing we need to do is change the query that we are sending to HighGraph. Instead of the post query, we need to actually send a request to the posts connection query. In this case, we're using the Relay Connections specification in GraphQL to allow us to have a lot of information about each page of content, a cursor so we know where to start the next request, and all sorts of extra stuff all built in, all from creating our schema. So let's go ahead and delete this query. And then we're going to, again, instead of going for the posts, we're going to go for posts connection. And we're going to rename this to pages just to keep things straight in the way that we're working. We're going to use the same first here, and we're going to have the size. Again, we want the first X number no matter what. And we're also going to have the exact same order by, in this case, created at in the descending order. Then we need to tell it what to return for us. In this case, we're going to get the edges. But again, we want to rename this so that it's clear in our variable. So this is going to be renamed to posts. And we're going to get all those edges. And each edge is a post, but the post comes with a new cursor variable as well. And then it comes with all the things that we would expect from the post data in the node for that edge. In this case, it's going to be the same query we had before. We need the ID, the slug, the created at date, and the content with the HTML coming off of that. So this might seem a little complicated for just getting the posts. But the other thing that we get out of using post connection is the page information object. So as a sibling to our posts object, we're going to have a page info object. And this has a whole bunch of stuff. It has a start cursor, an end cursor, has next page as a Boolean, has previous page as a Boolean, and, and some other stuff. We don't need all that. We just need to know if there's an end cursor and if it has a next page. That's going to be enough information for us to take care of what we need here. Now, if we were just to save this in, things would break. We no longer have this idea of posts in the object that's coming back. So we need to restructure the information that we're getting back off of this. So instead of posts, we're actually getting something called pages now. And then instead of looping through the posts, we actually need to loop through the pages, pages.posts. So the pages is the first page. And then the posts is every object in the posts array. We need to make one more change here. Now, instead of just the post that we're passing into this post, we actually need the data for the post, which is an, in an unfortunately named post object. So now we're going to pass the post a post.post .post variable. Save that in, and we should, in theory, see no changes. So let's go ahead and instead of having the page size be 10, let's set it to 3 so we can see that change in action. 
All right, we have three blog posts. So we are good to go. We are using the first page of all of the blog posts. We are set to create our next button. So to create this button, we need to create a new component. In our components folder, we're going to create a new file named more.jsx. Now we were working in an Astro component before, we are now working in a JSX component, and this project in Astro is set up to allow for React framework components. So we need to tell it that we have React, so import React, and later on we're also gonna need use state, so let's go ahead and get that in as well, and then we need to import that from React. From there we need to set up our functional component, so we'll set a const more is equal to, and we're going to have a couple different props passed into this, but let's go ahead and get our function ready. The props that we're going to pass into it are going to be the current cursor, which we're going to get from our high graph query, and the size that we need. So this will keep our page length the same no matter how far down we're going. From there, we're going to go ahead and set up a little bit of state that we're going to need later. First, we need a posts area. This is going to collect all the posts that we get from our high graph requests. We're going to set this initially to a blank array. We need also the cursor. We're going to be resetting this as we get new information. So we need this as a stateful object. We're going to use state. In this case, we're going to use the current cursor that we're getting from our props. We need to know if this has next. So we're going to have a has next state and we're going to use false for this, this will just be a Boolean. And we're gonna set this to true because we want to let the, the component know that we are going to expect this to have more pages. And then finally, just for some good user experience, we wanna go ahead and set a loading state as well. And we're gonna set that initially to false. We're also going to need some sort of click handler that's going to happen. So we're gonna go ahead and set a new function called get more. This is going to be an async function, and we'll just leave this as a blank function for the moment. Finally, we need to return our markup. So we'll go ahead and make this a fragment in our JSX, and then inside that fragment, we're gonna to have to start with two elements. One is going to be a loading area. If loading is true, then we will set it to a div that has the word loading inside of it. We're going to have some tailwind classes. So if you'll forgive me, I'm going to add this as a copy and paste. And then if the has next state is true, we need to display the button to get more. And again, we're going to have some tailwind classes, so this will be a copy and paste. The only thing different here is going to be that we have a an on-click property on our button, and this is going to reference the get more function that we created up here. And then finally, when we're done with this, we need to export this back out. Now that that's saved in, we have the ability to use it in our index.astro file with an import at the top, import more from components slash more.jsx. Then we can use that. We're gonna place that directly underneath our loop of posts in our main layout. But before we do that, we do wanna to check to see if there is a next page. So instead of just putting the component, we're going to check pages, which is our data, dot page info, which is that object that has has next page. And then we're gonna check on that the has next page Boolean. If that is true, we're then going to display a new component, in this case, the more component. We're gonna pass it the size and we're gonna get that from our page size. We're also gonna pass it the current cursor, which is another prop that we set. This is going to come from that page information object as well. So pages page info dot end cursor, because this is the last item in our current list. And then finally, we're going to use a specific directive in Astro to tell the client when we want this React component to render. In this case, it's not important for the main 
brunt of the page, but when it becomes visible, we want that to happen. So Astro provides us with a lot of directives around this. We could do it when the thread is idle, immediately on load via a media query, but instead we're going to use client colon visible so that when the page gets down to this area, we will load the component. Then we make it a self-closing tag and we are good to go. We'll save that in. And we can now see that we have a get more button. It doesn't do anything yet, so we need to actually make that get more function do something. Now the get more function is where a lot of the magic of this pattern is going to happen. So the first thing we're gonna do before we do anything else is we're gonna go ahead and set the loading state to true. This is going to allow the loading screen to show up and let the user know that we're doing something in the background. Then much like we did on the homepage, we do need to fetch from high graph. So in our fetch, we need to provide the body with a stringified version of JSON. This is going to be where we have our query and our variables. Our variables are going to be the size and the cursor, both of which are being set in our state. The query is going to be a string, and it's going to be very similar to what we had on the home page. We start with the query. We're going to pass it the cursor as a string and the size as an integer, and these are required properties. Once we have that, we need to make the posts connection query. Again, this is just a built-in query from within high graph. We're going to take a look at after where the current cursor is, the current last cursor. So this will find that post inside of all the pages and get the next set of posts from the query. In this case, we want the first X number after that from the size that we're passing in. And then we can again order this by the created at date in a descending order. From that query, we're going to create a posts array. And that's going to, again, be the edges like on the home page. The rest of this query is going to be very similar to the home page. Let's just copy and paste that in. You can see we have the cursor, the post information, all the content from that, and the same page info from the home page. Once we have our fetch, we're able to actually run that. So let's go ahead and say const JSON, and we're going to await the response.json to change the buffer to an actual object. And then we're gonna get the data off that with the destructure equals JSON. And then from there, we can get more information with another destructure as well. Const posts array, which is our array and page info will come off of the data.posts connection object. And then once we have that information, we can set our posts array. And in this case, even though we have a blank array to begin with, we want to set this new array to first take the initial posts value, spread that, and then at the end of it, add the new posts array to this array. We can set the cursor to the new cursor from page info.end cursor. And we can set the has next boolean as well to page info dot has next page. And then this is now complete. So we can tell the browser that loading is now done. We set loading to false. Now, in theory, we have all of our posts, but we don't have any markup to display those yet. So just like on the home page, we will take our posts array and map over it. We need the post, and then we're going to run that through and return out a component. The component is going to have a div, just like on the home page. We'll pass this one a key since it's a React component of post.cursor, since that's a unique identifier. Give it some class names so we can display things nicely from Tailwind. And then inside of this div, we will use a post content component and pass that the 
post.post, again, much like on the home page. We also need to import that at the top of our component as well. We'll import post, compo post content from the components folder, post content. From here, we can click the get more button and you can see the loading state appears for just a second and then we get the next three posts in our array. And then finally we click it one more time and we get the last post. So this allows us to have as many posts as we want and implement it in a way that is standard in the overarching social media sphere. This load more pattern is very, very common in a micro blocking platform. Latest post at the top and then slowly getting further and further back. This allows the user to choose when they load the next post. It doesn't make them load, doesn't have more data use, anything like that throughout the process. It allows them to choose, it allows us to choose, and it allows our websites to be as performant as possible on initial load and on every load after that. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, do join the Slack community for HighGraph. That is slack.highgraph.com.